Now, website security, especially when it comes to WordPress, is incredibly important. And today, I'm going to give you a quick start guide to get you up and running with the basics of iTheme security, a totally free plugin that allows you to secure and lock down various different aspects of your WordPress website very easily. Now, the first thing you need to do is go into the plugin section of your website, do a search for iTheme security, and then you'll see we have this listed. If we take a look at the more details, we can find out how popular this actually is. Last updated, how it's compatible, and also more importantly, the active installations and the average rating. As you can see, it is pretty good. Now I've been using this for a good many years, so this isn't something I'm new to, but let's go ahead and take a look at how we set it up. So once you've gone ahead, installed and activated the plugin, you'll see you have a new entry and inside there we have setup. Let's go ahead and use that. And this will then go through and we'll go through a very simplistic wizard that will set up the basics, but we can still tweak afterwards. So now once you hit that setup, the first thing it's going to do is ask you what type of website are you actually going to apply this to. So just choose the one that's relevant to you. In this example, I'm going to say this is a blog website. Next thing it's going to do is go through then and ask you a series of questions. And don't worry, don't feel daunted. This is relatively simple and straightforward. So the first thing it's going to do is ask you to enable Security Check Pro. Now this is going to connect up and send data to the iTheme security servers. No identifying information apparently is being sent over, but it's up to you if you feel comfortable with that option. You can, of course, read the privacy policy. I'm going to enable this in this example because this is just a demo site, but please do read those privacy policy details details. Let's click on next. And then we can see, are we setting this up for ourselves or are we setting this up for a client? In this example, we're going to choose self. Next up, we're going to have the enforce password option. Now this makes sure that a complex password is being used and not something that would be easy to find, exploit and hack. So I would always recommend you enable this function. Click on next once you've done that. And now we're going to ask a few more questions. Now, inside here, you can choose to enable or disable those features. So things like local brute force, security check pro, and so on. Now, I would recommend leaving these options on and also enabling the two-factor authentication. This allows you to make sure that anybody that signs into your website will have to go through a second level of authentication. Things like having an email with a passcode sent to them, those types of things. You also have the option for site scan scheduling. This allows you to schedule scans on your website on a regular basis, which again is something that I would recommend you do. Now, once you've enabled these, you can click on next and that will take you through each of these different sections. But the reality is they're basically just going to ask you for the same as what we've seen here. So we'll just quickly run through those. You'll see your two-factor authentication, your lockouts, site check, and so on. So we'll click next. And then we'll move on to the next one, which is user groups. So if you have user groups enabled as part of your website, you may have a blog where you want people to sign up and be able to comment and so on. You can set things up inside here. Now you can use the default, which is probably perfectly fine for most users. But if you wanted to create something a little bit more customized, you could do that from here as well. I would recommend if you're new to working with this, choose default. And if you want to change things afterwards when you're a little bit more comfortable, you can do. So let's hit default. Then this is going to take us in and show us the administrators. So this is going to allow us to quickly go ahead and enable or disable features for that particular user group. I would recommend reading through these, but I'm going to leave everything set to the default. Now you can click on next and that will take you over to the edit user group. And then you can click on next and it'll take you over to the subscribers and so on and so forth. So you can go through these or you can just skip user groups and just accept the default values they have here. We'll choose that in this example. Then we've got the option to configure the website using the recommended settings. So again, we'll say recommended. This is where we're going to go through and make sure that the IP detection to make sure that known IP addresses that are attempting to hack websites and so on, we can enable the option to stop them doing that and have it automatically detected. We can also say add my current IP address to the authorized host list. So we'll check that option. And then you see the IP detection. You've got a couple of different options inside you, but I would recommend you leave the security check scan enabled. And you can see that tells you a little bit more about what it does. We'll click on next. 
Next up, we have the Network Brute Force option. And what this allows you to do is allows your website to share bad IP addresses that have been blocked with other users in a centralized database and have that information shared out. It's up to you if you feel comfortable doing that. If you don't, then you can leave it as it is. And if you want to be updated, you could drop your email address inside there and choose to receive email updates. For this example, I'm going to leave a set out of that and we'll click on next. Next, we've got the notification center, and this is going to notify the admin, the primary admin for your website or any other named users or recipients that you want to have access to the email that tells them any kind of things like the brute force lockouts, any file changes, those types of things. Anybody that's listed inside you will receive an update via email to let them know of any changes and therefore you can take action should you need to. We'll leave that as it's set as default and we'll say OK. And then we're going to say we've gone through everything inside this wizard. Let's go ahead and secure our site. It'll take a couple of seconds, apply all those settings to our site, and then we should have a much more secure website. And after a few moments, that's gone ahead and finished everything. So we'll click on the finish option. Now, once you've done that, you can go ahead and go to your dashboard. And this now gives you an overview of your website and all the various different things that are going on inside your website. So this is quite useful and you'll see this will start to populate as your site starts to get traffic and you get information inside you. So this is very useful. It'll also give you information about any plugins you may have installed, any vulnerabilities. And you can see this will actually tell you any vulnerabilities, any block lists, and you can find out you can update accordingly. And the same things for lockouts, bans, brute force attacks, and so on. That's not all you can do. That's the basics of setting everything up. But you can still go in and you can fine tune and tweak even further. If we hop into the settings section, you can see this kind of takes us back into what we originally saw as part of the setup wizard. However, there's still more options inside you that are not part of that setup wizard. And I'm going to go through some of the ones that I would recommend that you set up right now. Now, the first one is if we take a look at the all features is the enforce SSL. Now, as long as you've got an SSL certificate installed in your website and most modern hosting accounts will give you the ability to have an SSL certificate installed for free as part of your hosting, you always should have this. And what this does is it basically says any pages that may not be using that SSL certificate, force them to do it. Therefore, you don't have insecure pages on your site. So I would recommend you enable that option. Next up, we've got the file change option, and this will monitor your website for any changed files anywhere inside WordPress. Now, while this isn't always an indication your site has been compromised, it is something to be aware of. And if you haven't made any updates to anything, any plugins, themes, and so on, it could be an indication that your site has been compromised. But it's always good to have that enabled just so you can monitor that. And if any files are changed, you can investigate with a little bit more knowledge. Now, on top of that, you'll see some of these have little cogs by the side of them. So, for example, the two-factor authentication, we click on the cog, and that will open up the settings. And this allows us to configure things in a little bit more detail. So, we've got authentication methods available to all users. You can set this to be all, or you can say all except email, or you can select methods manually. So, if we choose select methods manually, you can see we could say all we want in this example is the email authentication. And we'll say that's good. You can also disable this on first login and adjust the onboard welcome message. Again, tweak this the way that you want, but making sure you do have it enabled. We can hit save and we've now customized that particular setting. Going back to our settings, again, we've got more options should we want to, so you can customize these. So for example, database backups, if you want to back up your database on a regular basis, you can do that and you can set a schedule for when they're done. So the backup interval, how you want the backup to be handled, whether you want to email it and so on, but you can have to save locally or save locally and email. I'm going to disable that in this example, but it is useful if you have a regularly updated site, especially if you're running something like an e-commerce store, it's good to have those backups because your database is going to hold all the data for your products, for your orders, those kinds of things. So it's useful to have that backed up if something happens. And I would re recommend probably backing that up on a daily basis, especially for busy websites. <music> Now, on top of all these options, there's also advanced. So let's go ahead and open that up. And this is where we kind of get into the, as it would suggest, the more advanced options. Now, this is something that I would recommend you take some time to check and look to see exactly what's going on. But I'm going to give you what I generally tend to set up with my sites. So first of all, we've got our system tweaks, and this is where we can control file access. Do you want to do things like protecting system files and disable directory browsing? 
Sometimes you'll have a plugin that may have a little bit of a wobbly, but I generally haven't found that to be the case. So I would recommend you protect the system files and disable directory browsing. The same thing goes for PHP execution. Now, sometimes this can cause an issue when you upload files or upload plugins, but generally you should be fine. But you can see disable PHP in uploads. You generally should never need to have any PHP file uploaded into the uploads folder of your website. But once you've gone ahead and set everything up, I would generally tend to recommend enabling these options. But if you find you have a problem, you can simply log in, come into advanced, disable these, do your updates, your changes, whatever it is you're going to do, and then re-enable it if you find you have a problem. Next, if we hop over to WordPress tweaks, there's a couple of things inside here. Now, the XML RPC. Now, unless you're using specific plugins or you have pingbacks or using Jetpack plugin, there shouldn't be any need to have the XML RPC enabled. So what I tend to do is disable that completely. If you are using one of those plugins like Jetpack, for example, you will need to leave this enabled. So if you're not using the REST API for things like Instagram and so on, you can go ahead and disable it or at least restrict access to it. Next up, you've got your users. By default, you can allow users to sign in with their email address or the nickname that they choose. Sometimes this can be an issue because the username is publicly available, especially if you have authors. So what you may want to do is set this up to be email address only. That way, there's less chance of the email address being found and therefore you can cut back on the potential problems. I would also recommend you use the force unique nickname and also disable extra user archives. Generally, there's no need for those to be included. And the disable extra user archives, if you have people being able to sign up, you don't want them to have archives based upon their username, so it's good to disable those. We'll go ahead and hit save. We'll go to the hide back end. Now, enable the hide back end feature. If we enable this, this allows you to very easily change the login URL from wp-admin to whatever you actually want it to be. And again, this is one of those things that I would recommend you do. I would recommend you leave the enable redirection enabled and not to worry too much about the advanced. I would say leave that as it is, hit save. Then we've got the feature flags, which enables encryption. This is to be used inside the two-factor authentication function. It's gradually rolling out. It's up to you if you want to use it. If you find any issues, I would recommend you disable it. But that's the basics of what you need to set up. But there's still more. Let's head over this time to the tools option. And you can see there's things like change user ID. Now, by default, whenever you install WordPress, the first user, which is generally the admin user, when you create your website, it will have the user ID of number one, which in itself can be a security issue because hackers know for most users that ID will be valid. What we're going to do is we're going to click and we say we're going to run this and that's updated the user ID to a random number. So they would have to guess what that number is. Is it impossible? Probably not, but it does add an extra little level. The other thing you can do is change the database table prefix. Again, adds another level of security. Now, for most of the other things, I would say you can leave them as they are. You don't really need to go in and dig into them. However, like I say, if you're new to this, I would generally recommend just to follow along with the things that I've said today. Do some of the advanced options and some of these tools options, and you should have another level of security. But that's not all you can do. There's still more you can do. And if you want to check out my video on seven methods of improving the security on your WordPress websites, you can check out the link in the corner and in the description now. That's going to help you get even more security in place to protect your WordPress website. But as always, I welcome any comments, questions, or feedback you have. Drop those in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.